If you are relatively old, you might have known or at least heard of sea monkeys from several decades ago. Obviously, I'm not talking about the Subnautica sea monkey. But yeah, sea monkey does have its own video game. A PS1 video game called The Amazing Virtual Sea Monkeys. A game which I played a lot as a kid actually. I remember it being really good, but then I googled to see how the gameplay really is and I was like, wow, is this really how it looks? But anyway, yes, sea monkey is a real animal. Well, kinda, at least. Let me bring up the question. What exactly is sea monkey? So, let's just straight up answer the question. Sea monkeys is a brand. It was originally called Instant Life, but then changed to Sea Monkeys years later. Sea Monkeys is sold as an easy to raise instant aquarium pet. So, what exactly is the creature being sold here? It's actually brine shrimp, Artemia. Because of the Sea Monkeys brand popularity back then, these creatures are now generally known as Sea Monkey. Well, to be fair, Sea Monkey might not be as popular right now. Perhaps most of the new generation have not even heard of sea monkey before, especially those that don't live in the USA. So it is what it is. Actually, let me talk a little bit about the sea monkey's brand. The sea monkey's brand was created by Harold von Braunhut, which the person himself has quite the life story, by the way. I'm not gonna talk about the person, but if you are curious, just read the Wikipedia article. Apparently, this person also saw the product called Invisible Goldfish, which is just a fishbowl without anything in it, the Crazy Crab, which is just a hermit crab in a box, and many other questionable products. Anyway, the Sea Monkey's product itself provides you with three things. Pack one called Water Purifier, which is basically a water conditioner to make the water suitable as Artemia habitat. Pack two called Instant Life X, which is basically Artemia X and some other substances, and pack 3 called growth food, which is spirulina and yeast, the food for the brine shrimp. So how it works is, you prepare a tank filled with water, then you add pack 1, stir it, and wait 24 hours. After that, you add the instant live X and you stir it again. If the condition is right, the brine shrimp X will hatch. These eggs are naturally dormant until it enters a suitable condition. That's just the natural life cycle of brine shrimp, which I'll talk about later of course. A week after the eggs hatch, you then add pack 3. After that, if you keep them in perfectly suitable condition, the ecosystem will self-sustain. If not, then you need to add pack 3 every week or less. That basically means buying more pack 3. The reason why you add the pack a week after they hatch has something to do with their life cycle, which I'll talk about later as I said earlier. The reason why you don't need to feed them every day after that is because the spirulina itself could reproduce in a suitable condition, providing enough food supply. Again, in a perfectly suitable condition that is. And yeah, that's about it. If that doesn't sound interesting, that's because, well, you're probably right. It is not that interesting. In fact, it's not even successful initially. What makes them popular is the Sea Monkeys character, which they advertise as comic books and even video game that I already showed earlier. Kids like them, and so kids ask their parents to buy them. Or maybe some don't even ask, who knows. I hope not at least. In reality, brine shrimps do not resemble the Sea Monkey character and they are not exactly interactive, so not a lot of people want to keep them for long. Besides that, they also don't last that long. That's why, the brain creator apparently worked together with a marine biologist to hybridize different species of Artemia to finally create a breed which could last for years, calling them super sea monkeys. I have no idea about the truth behind the claim, but it is written in their website at least, so yeah. Even though Sea Monkeys is not as popular right now, it is still sold and you can still buy them online if you want to. Outside of the Sea Monkeys brand, the animals themselves are actually quite popular and useful for various things. Now, let's actually talk about Sea Monkey as an animal. But before that...
Brine shrimps are crustacea, but they are not shrimps. They are branchiopod, characterized by the presence of gills on their appendages. The name itself means gill food. Within the branchiopoda class, they are classified in the Anostraca order. Ostracon means cell, and Anostraca basically means no shell, characterized by the lack of carapace. Members of this order is generally called fairy shrimps. One of the interesting things about this order is the fact that they swim upside down. Brine shrimps are classified in its own family, Artemidae, with only one genus, which is of course Artemia. I'm not sure why they are given the name Artemia though. Artemia live in salt lakes. So yeah, even though they are commonly known as sea monkey, they are not even a sea creature. And not related to monkey, of course. They are small animals, only about 1 cm long. Their body is divided into cephalon, which is the head, 11 segments of thorax, each with a pair of legs, and abdomen. The first two segments of the abdomen are fused and carry the reproductive organ. In total, they usually have around 19 segments. Males have a modified second antennae that functions as a clasper to hold females during mating. Females have regular second antennae, and sometimes females are easily noticeable because you can see the eggs inside the egg sac on the base of their abdomen. Females ovulate quite frequently. After hours of grabbing onto a female, Male will insert their penis into the female sac and fertilize the eggs. In a suitable environmental condition, the egg will almost instantly hatch into nauplius, which is a free-swimming larva. Oh, by the way, just to be clear, nauplius form of larva is not exclusive to the brine shrimp. Other crustaceans also have nauplius larva. Nauplius is the singular form of the word. Nauplii is plural, which is more often spoken. But anyway. That's if the condition is suitable. If not, then a brown chorion outer layer will form and cover the egg. This kind of egg is called a cyst, and this cyst will remain dormant after being deposited by the female. Cysts will float on the water surface, and after some sun ray exposure, they will dry out. That's the one being used for the sea monkey's product. Even if they naturally dry out, they will be carried by waves and winds, and after being immersed into suitable water, the embryo will resume its development. After several hours, the outer layer will crack, the cyst will burst, then the embryo will hang, still inside a membrane by the way. After some time, embryo will finish its development into nauplius, and then break through the membrane, free swimming in its habitat. At the first stage of their life as nauplius, their digestive system is not fully developed yet, and they fully rely on yolk reserve. This is why the food pack of the sea monkey's product is not added immediately. To reach adulthood, Nauplius will need to undergo several molting and development before reaching adulthood. They feed on algae and bacteria, just like their adult forms, but they only have a singular simple eye called Nauplius eye that can detect light, and they also have paddle-like antennae to swim. This development process varies between a week to months, depends on how suitable their living condition is. As they develop, their limbs aka thoracopods grows, and their petal-like antennae become smaller into regular antennae. As they reach adulthood, they will undergo sexual differentiation. And yeah, that is their life cycle. Earlier, I did say they are quite popular and useful for various things, right? So let's talk about that. The economical importance that could widely apply is actually not as pets, but as fish food. Some aquaculture enjoyers even say brine shrimps is the best live food for aquarium fish. Not only because it's a good source of protein and fat, but also because you can basically use any stage of Artemia as fish food, including their cysts. That's the reason why Artemia farms exist throughout the world, to use them as fish food. Artemia is known for their resilience, which is why they are often used for toxicity tests. For example, Artemia was used to test the toxicity of various avermectin, which is used to treat parasitic worms. The fact that you can rear Artemia in a large amount of quantity helps for doing research. To put it simply, you could obtain a large amount of test subjects with relative ease. Another interesting research done to brine shrimp is carrying them to space. I mean, outer space, going to the moon, 
literally. Brine streams were carried by both US and Russian outer space expeditions back in the day to test the effect of cosmic ray radiation. At first, their seas were carried to the moon, and then they tried to hatch the seas back on Earth. 90% of the embryo died, but hey, 10% survived, which is quite something I guess. Several years later, they hatched the seas inside the space shuttle. Again, many of them died, but hey, some still survived, so that's also quite something I guess. And yeah, that is sea monkey, aka brine shrimp, aka artemia. What is typically known as a nostalgic aquarium pet actually have an interesting life history. There are multiple valid species that are recognized, but some of their taxonomy is still not that robust, which means they could actually be more diverse. Or the opposite could also be true, I suppose. Point being, we still have a lot to learn about them. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, this video is not sponsored and I am not trying to advertise the product at all. I don't think anyone would think so, but I'll clarify just in case. Anyway, enjoy your day.